Math 1314, Tyler Jr. College, section 2.2, more on functions and their graphs. In the previous series, series of videos, we learned about relations, domains, ranges, functions, graphs, uh, equations as relations and functions, uh, obtaining information from a graph, the vertical line test, intercepts, we learned about a lot of things, but there's a lot of things we didn't learn about, in general, about functions. When we get past this section, we'll start focusing on specific categories of functions. For example, in 2.3, we'll focus primarily on linear functions whose graphs, as you can probably infer, are lines. So they'll be pretty predictable, and we'll figure out all kinds of nifty things about them. But before we get there, we still have some general function concepts to discuss. The first one we're going to discuss are increasing, decreasing, and constant functions. On the board, you see I've got three generic graphs. All three of them are over a current domain that's an open interval from A to B. And by the way, an interval whose endpoints have parentheses is called an open interval if both ends contain brackets, meaning that includes the endpoints, it's called a closed interval. I don't think I've introduced the notation to you before, but I may accidentally use it like I just did. So again, an interval in which the endpoints are not included because of the parentheses is called an open interval, and an interval in which the endpoints are included, indicated by brackets, is called a closed interval. Now you may be wondering, how come I have circles on here? You know what? If I'm saying the domain is on an open interval, I shouldn't. So let's open up those circles on the graphs. All right. But if you'll notice, all three of these functions are defined on a domain that's just an open interval generically from A to B. So it starts at one point, ends at another point, but doesn't include the beginning and ending starting points. Visually, it's pretty easy to see why these graphs are called increasing, decreasing, and constant. From left to right, the first graph is going up as we move from left to right. So this graph is increasing. The second graph is going down from left to right, so this graph is decreasing. But the third graph is staying horizontal as we move from left to right, so this graph is called constant. The adjectives increasing, decreasing, and constant are describing what the y values are doing as we move from left to right on the graph. So from left to right, the y, y values are getting higher or lower, or they're remaining constant. So visually, it's easy to go increasing, decreasing, constant, but there's a little more rigorous definition and although you can answer most homework questions without this rigorous definition, for those of you heading towards calculus, this definition will show up again. It's not that difficult to wrap your mind around that. How do we define a function as increasing in terms of its x and y values? Well, let's think about what we mean from moving from left to right. Let's pretend we pick two x values in the domain We'll call the first one x1 and the second one x2. So if we move from x1 to x2, it's kind of like we're moving from left to right. Well, what can we say about these two x's y values? To find the y values, we can go up to the graph, and then once we hit the graph, go across to the y-axis. So the first y value is the output when we put the first x value into the function. So the first y value, f of x1, would land about there. But what about the second y value? If we go to the second x value and go up to the graph, and then across to the y-axis, it's barely higher, but it is higher. So how can we define a function being increasing specifically in terms of its x and y values, we can say the following. If f of x is, excuse me, 
a function f of x is increasing on the open interval a, b if x1 is less than x2, which we can see because x1 is to the left of x2, implies the first y is less than the second y, or f of x1 is less than f of x2. Equivalently, smaller inputs produce smaller outputs. That forces the graph to increase. If you get the definition for an increasing function in terms of its inputs and outputs, what do you think the definition of a decreasing function would be? I invite you to pause the video to see if you can uh, replicate the idea and come up with the implication that defi defines a decreasing function. It starts the same way. We start with two x's because we're thinking about moving from left to right. So we'll call the leftmost x, x1, and the rightmost x, x2. But what can we say about their outputs, their y values? The first x value, if we go up to the graph to find the point whose x coordinate is x1, and then go over to the y-axis to locate the y-value, the y-value corresponds to the output. So this y-value is f of x1, just like it was over here. But if we do the same thing with the second x, go up to the graph and then over to the y-axis to locate the y-coordinate, the y-coordinate corresponds to the output f of x2. Which of those outputs is greater, the first or the second? Well, the first output is higher, or the first y-coordinate is higher on the y-axis, so the first output is greater. So have you figured out the definition of a function being decreasing? It starts with the same implication. A function f of x is decreasing on the interval, open interval, a comma b, if x1 is less than x2 implies what? Not that the first output is less than the second one, but the first output, f of x1, is greater than the second output, f of x2. So we kind of get the same implication except the opposite, um, I don't want to say conclusion, but that's consequent. I'm thinking in terms of symbolic logic. So the antecedent of this implication is the same. I'm sorry, I'm using so much symbolic logic uh, vocabulary, I owe it to you to explain what I'm saying. This symbol is called an implication. Actually, the entire statement in blue is called an implication. It's a symbol for the phrase, if this happens, then that happens. The first part of an implication is called the antecedent, and the second part, the then part, is called the consequent. So what I was saying is, in both of these implications, the antecedent is the same. They're both starting if the first x is less than the second x. But the consequences are different. For increasing, if the first x is less than the, first, than the second x, then the first y is less than the second y. But if you're decreasing, if the first x is less than the second x, then the first y is greater than the second y. That will force the graph to decrease. For constant, it's pretty easy. Because what can we say about all the y values? Well, because the line is horizontal, all the y values are the same. So what we can say about uh, the function being constant on the interval is if f of x1 equals f of x2 for every x1 and x2. So it doesn't matter which one comes first because all of their outputs would be the same. Again, this is a fairly rigorous definition of something that is visually intuitive. Look, the graph is increasing. Look, the graph is decreasing. Look, the graph is constant in the sense that the y values are going up, the y values are going down, or the y values are remaining constant. Uh, in the next video, I'll demonstrate how this would be asked, say, in a homework or a test question. But keep in mind, for those of you moving towards calculus, you will see more symbolic representations of algebraic ideas quite often, in fact.